inside the tube. So hydrostatic pressure is just because of lots of fluid here. That fluid, that water is exerting pressure and trying to get out. That will be a force which will try to move water outside towards the Bowman space, right? Now how much is the hydrostatic pressure? And hydrostatic pressure would be written normally like P, P standing for hydrostatic pressure and glomerular capillaries. So hydrostatic pressure here. Normally this is about 45 millimeter of mercury. So think about it for a second. There is a 45 millimeter of mercury push because of the fluids in this area trying to move the fluid out. Outside is Bowman space, it's just trying to move it out wherever it goes. What is outside is Bowman space. Then there is 27 millimeter of mercury, f the pressure which is trying to move the fluid back. So shouldn't these be subtracted to understand what is the net filtration pressure? Yes. So basically what you would do is you'll pick up 45 and you'll subtract 27. But we're not finished yet. This is not it. There are two more forces. Remember we talked about there are four forces here. The other two forces are what happens here. It's very simple. Imagine you've gotten some fluid here. You've gotten some proteins here. Proteins are trying to keep the water inside. Fluid is trying to move the water out. Fluid pressure. But if this thing is made up of steel, nothing is going to move out. Why? Because it is steel. It's not going to let the permeability is not there. Or let's say there is permeability, but this area is solid. There is no space here. There is nothing to fill this fluid in. Then do you think that, that the substances will move out? No. So that means more than just things here, there is also factors which are on the other side in the Bowman space. The factors are actually fortunately the same factors. So Bowman space, we'll, we'll put that this way, we'll say on cortic pressure in the Bowman capillary or Bowman space, Bowman capsule. Why do I call it capillary? Maybe because it's a C. So Bowman capsule on cortic, normally it is zero. Why zero? Because you usually do not want to see proteins in the Bowman capsule. Normally if there are proteins other than small amino acids which are there, uh, if you actually start seeing albumin or globulins in here, then the patient is sick. Patient is going to have a nephritic or nephrotic syndrome and he's going to have a problem. So in a physiologically healthy patient, you do not see proteins here. There are small amino acids which come in and get reabsorbed. So normally the oncotic pressure of proteins in here is zero. So that means there are no proteins. There are no proteins sitting here pulling the water out. Okay, cool. So that is zero. Then, so that remember I said in the early part of the lecture, out of these four, there would just be three which are important. So this one is out. Why this is out? In a healthy physiological condition, this does not exist. Proteins are not in the Bowman space. Then, hydrostatic pressure in Bowman capsule. Hydrostatic, of course, this is now, as we are, as we are moving fluid and water out, fluid is fi filling here. That fluid is going to cause hydrostatic pressure. So how much is that hydrostatic pressure? Normally, that hydrostatic pressure is about 10 millimeter of mercury. Now, what is that hydrostatic pressure doing? That hydrostatic pressure is pushing the fluids back. So, hydrostatic pressure here is pushing the fluids back. This hydrostatic pressure is pushing the fluid. This hydrostatic pressure is pushing the fluid from the glomerulus into the Bowman space. This hydrostatic pressure is moving the fluid from the, trying to push the fluid from the Bowman's into the glomerulus. On cortic pressure inside the glomerular capillaries, inside the capillary is trying to keep the fluid here. So I would say there is one positive force moving the fluid from gl glomerulus, trying to move the fluid from glomerulus to the nephron. And there are to the Bowman space. And there are two opposing forces which are trying to move the fluid back. So what is the net force? That is the net filtration pressure. So what is the net force? The net force is if you pick up, so this one is moving it towards the Bowman space. This one is pulling it back. This one is pulling it back. So you add them. What you do is you say plasma, so hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillary, that is this big one minus 
on cortic pressure in the glomerular capillary, that is this black one, minus the um, hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman space. So hydrostatic pressure in Bowman's capsule. Where did this go? We don't care because normally it is zero. Otherwise, you could have, if it existed, it would have been trying to pull the fluid on this side as well because it is a protein, protein try, trying to tend to move. So if the protein sits here, it moves the fluid here. If protein sits here, it moves the fluid there. So how do we now see this? This would be 45 millimeter of mercury minus 27 millimeter of mercury minus 10 millimeter of mercury. So that would become 8 millimeter of mercury net pressure. Now this net pressure of 8 positive means that fluid would move from the glomerulus to the Bowman space. So there is a 8 millimeter of mercury pressure, net pressure here in this area, which moves the fluids from glomerulus into the Bowman space. Understood? Three factors. You know all physiological phenomena, most of the pathological phenomena will be moving one of these levers or more of these levers. So as a doctor, as a student, as a nursing student, as a health professional, just know this, that whenever you are affecting a GFR, you need to figure out what levers of these three are moving. That's it. You need to say, okay, this thing caused the reduction in GFR. Does that mean it caused an effect on the hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillary or hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman space or on cortic pressure? For example, Kwashiorkor is a very common disease in African or poor countries. Malnutrition, there is less proteins in the body. What happens? Less proteins, less oncotic pressure. This pressure goes down. Let's say it goes down to 5. If you put that over here, that would become what? So core, 45 millimeter minus 5 minus 10 equals what? 15, 45, 30. 30 millimeter of mercury. That is now a greater pressure and GFR would increase, right? Now, before we move for forward, I have to tell you one very important secret. This is the secret which would help you here. That secret is the pressure in the glomerulus, the net filtration pressure in the glomerulus is usually dependent, is dependent mostly hydrostatic pressures on the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole. These are the two systems they have, remember these are arterioles, so they have muscles in them, smooth muscles. These smooth muscles contract and dilate. Their contraction and dilate, dilatation causes the pressure variation in the glomerulus. So let me, let's back up for a second. We talked about GFR is dependent upon the coefficient and the net filtration pressure, right? Then we said coefficient does not usually change on daily basis because that is surface area and the permeability doesn't change every day. So out. So when you're talking about a disease or when thinking about GFR, don't think about coefficient right away. On the filtration pressure side, I had said that there are four, four factors. Out of those four, one factor, the oncotic pressure in the Bowman's capsule is not important because usually healthy patient, because usually there are no proteins in this area. You are left with three. Now let me get, get you the secret. Out of these three, hydrostatic are more important than oncotics for day-to-day -day regulation. Why? Protein, whenever you eat meat, yes, there is a little bit increase in protein which would increase GFR. But usually, or if the patient has kwashiorkor core and then there is chronically less proteins or multiple myeloma where there are chronically elevated proteins, other than those conditions, on day-to-day -day physiological mechanisms, there are no, not much alterations in protein. So it is just hydrostatic. You drink more water, hydrostatic pressure increases. You drink less water, hydrostatic pressure reduces. You took more salts, hydrostatic pressure changes, right? So these, these are the two primary factors which you should keep an eye on. So whenever you think about GFR increase or reduce, first think about hydrostatic pressures, then think about oncotic pressure, then go to the coefficient. Cool? Now, when you're thinking